On this episode of Built Not Bought, we go for a drive. That's right guys, so the last episode that I released on this HQ, there was an awesome response. You guys seem to enjoy it, so I've decided to film a further episode of this build. Now, it's another exciting time. Obviously, last time we got the engine running, so what we're gonna look at today is the process, getting it to the point of its first drive. So taking the thing for its first run, really what we're looking at is bedding the engine in, so it's gotta be sort of driven under load. So we're gonna look at towing something up the road so we can really bed those rings in. Then you start making sure that the gearbox works correctly. We've got brakes, we've got clutch, all those sorts of things. So Zach's just headed out to pick up the drive shaft, which is obviously a custom built, custom length drive shaft to suit that Supra 5 speed. So once we get that installed, we'll be looking at starting the thing up and it will be able to move pretty soon. So we just got the drive shaft back. Uh, it's just a mob in Qdale, Advanced Drive Shaft Services. He was really good. He actually got it done the next day, so I took it in yesterday, and it's already done. So, um, basically, just kept the yoke off the original drive shaft, and then we cut the yoke off the front of uh, Dad's drive shaft, which was up to his Celica gearbox, same as the Supra. Um, so, I've cut that off and got that machined onto this. Um, and then cut to length and balanced. So much handier having a hoist, eh? I definitely want to go to Queensland. First thing I'm going to invest in is a nice hoist. Makes a big difference. All right, so we'll start from the front of the car. Obviously, we've got the motor in, so that's been in for a while. Um, everything's been hooked up. We've done all the tuning we can as it runs, as it idles, so we've got to wait for it to run under load. But other than that, we pretty much had finished what happened in the engine bay. A lot of the focus in the last few days has been on the interior. Now, what I've done is tuned up the stereo, so we spent a day or so doing that. We've got door speakers put in, some 6x9s. There's a 10-inch sub in the middle there, so that's been put in, and there's an amp duct under the driver's side. We've got the uh, head unit installed, which is like a um, Apple CarPlay sort of Sony um, Android style head unit, so that can run apps and things like that. I've tuned it all up, got it running good, so that's pretty sweet. Got the gear stick installed, so Zach welded that up and put that together. Uh, more of the wiring's been done, we've just been sorting out door locks, the power windows have been sorted, that's pretty cool, I'll show you how that works. So it's really, again, like we were saying at the start, this is an old car, but we want those sort of modern luxuries in it. So we've got the central locking, we've got the windows, we've got the stereo, we've got those comforts. So all of that should be quite comfortable for thing to drive. So it's really kind of spending the time now to get those things sorted properly, and then when the car's finished, it's sort of a done job. It's not like, oh, I wanna go add windows now. I wanna go add this. It's like doing it right from the start, which is how I built my patrol. And that's what I sort of recommend to a lot of people when they do a car that is for them and not for someone else or to make money on. Um, so I went driving around yesterday, getting a few quotes and ideas on exhausts. Um, I've decided that because we already had this one, it didn't fit exactly, but this came with the car. Um, and after chatting to the blokes and stuff, I kind of decided I want to just get this one on and get it licensed and sort of listen to what it sounds like before I make a decision on if I want to go stainless, non-stainless, three inch, two and a half, all that. Um, and I also need to make a decision if I want to change to a drop tank at the back before I make the exhaust. So that's why I'm just going to retrofit this one for now, get it licensed and then down the track I'll probably look at getting an exhaust made to suit. So it's been a few days. I've pretty much just been going back through the car, tidying things up, um, just finishing off a couple of loose ends on the interior, uh, working on the centre console a little bit. I've just sent the, um, the door cards off to the upholsterer to get wrapped, so they'll be getting wrapped in the next few days, uh, along with the dash and the uh, 
I've still got to take the console to him, but that as well. Um, right now, I'm just putting some um, moisture barrier on the car doors just to help preserve things. Also, stops moisture getting through into the uh, MDF door cards and all that. Um, this is part of the kit I got from Car Builders, so I think it was about 460 bucks, and it basically came with everything. So it was enough sound deadener to do the back of the car all the way up to the firewall, a um, couple of sheets on the roof, doors, as well as enough acoustic liner to do the floor and an insole liner on the headlining to stop a bit of heat coming through. And then as well, obviously, this moisture guard. I found it was pretty good value for money. Um, obviously, it's going to affect how loud it is inside the cab. And being in a car, you want to sort of cruise around in. You don't want a lot of noise. Um, so I think it's definitely worth it. Right, so Zach's gone and put in the interior now. Just a bit of a mock-up. We've got the seats, the center console. None of it's finished, none of it's wrapped yet, but just gives you an idea of how everything's gonna fit up and look. Yeah, so interior's coming along. Um, just sort of fitting all the buttons in now. Got a couple of cup holders to go in. Um, there are some covered plates, so this isn't finished. Um, but this will all be getting wrapped in the same as the hood lining, so it's like a black suede. Uh, and I'll have orange stitching to tie it all in. The dash and this sort of center piece and around the head unit there is going to be wrapped in the um, carbon fiber. So that'll tie that all in. We've got windows, stereo, all the speakers work. So we're getting there. Uh, another thing I've done, well, going to do, still waiting for it to get here, uh, is putting aircon in. Um, so I just cut these little uh, vents into the dash. These are actually out of a PK Ford Ranger. So they're just little sort of flat vents that you can close off. Something different. Um, I think they look all right. The dash itself, I was, the one that came in the car, like pretty much all of them are all cracked, shot, warped, twisted, and just shit. And then the only place you can get them, a new one from Rares or something, they're about 800 bucks, which is a lot of money. And I was just sort of surfing along Gumtree trying to find a half decent second hand one or something and I stumbled across this bloke who makes um, reproduction fiberglass stashes and he does them for about 400 bucks so I think it was 460 delivered to me and he used over east so that's 60 bucks delivery to get it over to WA but he can basically do it with either your two vents as standard or your one vent or no vents which is what I did um, and that was like a really good find because yeah I didn't want to fork out the money and for half the price, you get something that's not going to warp or crack. So, it was a good idea. Uh, Aircon's arrived, so next to Sam's broken diff. Um, so, I just got to mount it all. So, uh, this is the unit that goes in under the dash. And then there's the uh, compressor over here. So, we've got to work out some sort of bracket to mount the um, alternator and the compressor. Probably around here somewhere. Uh, so the plan at the moment is just finishing up all the little nicks and knacks that weren't done properly or were just sort of mocked up. Uh, so I've tidied up all the wiring, that's pretty much finished. Uh, I'm just waiting on things to get back from the upholsterer. Uh, I'm just going to chuck on an original alley tray just to go over the pits and then once it's licensed I'll build, build the guards and uh, tray and everything. Um, so I'm pretty much just waiting really, waiting for a few things to happen so I can start putting the car back together and it's, it's pretty much ready to go. All right guys, a bit of a news flash before we go any further in this video. Now, last year I did a whole round of shows and this year it will be no different, but most of you know now that I'm moving over to Queensland. So Brisbane is gonna be the home city and I've of course gone to the Brisbane Four Wheel Drive Show. So coming up on the 27th and the 29th of March is the Brisbane National 4x4 Fishing and Boating Expo. Now, of course, I've got a deal for you guys. If you jump on their website and use code BNB20, it'll save you a few bucks and get you some tickets.
tickets nice and early before the show in March. So I wanna see you guys head down there. Of course, the patrol's gonna be there and there is that last door to be signed on the canopy if you wanna come and be part of the Build Not Board Truck. But I'm gonna get back to what we were doing and I'll see you guys at the show in March. So this is the first drive. We just got our permit this morning to obviously bed the thing in. Obviously it's not licensed yet, but the idea for this drive, we've got a big hill near us down the road. So we're gonna drive up there. You wanna sort of short shift the thing, put it in a high gear and load it up to bed those rings in. And then you just check things like water, water temp, oil, any leaks, anything like that. But being the first drive, you're looking at brakes, clutch, temperatures, all that kind of stuff. the same feeling I had when I got my patrol first built. How's it feel? Scary. <laughs> There's no wheel alignment either. Yeah. <laughs> it's the fastest it's ever been. Brake check. Oh, brakes are good. Yeah. We got speedo. Things are working. No uh, oil pressure's good. No RPM. Water temp's a bit funny, is it? The, yeah. the gauge ain't playing ball but none of the dash or anything's in it's still getting done by the trimmers but There we have it, the engine is bedded in. Now while we're on the topic, let's go to this week's tech tip about why is it important to bed an engine in. All right guys, welcome to this week's tech tip. Now I wanted to mention some stuff about bedding in a new engine, because this has happened with both the Patrol and now this HQ. Basically what happens when you build a new motor and you strip it right down to the block, you, you hone the block. And what that does is sort of score the edges of the cylinder. Now that is really crucial to do when building a new motor and putting new rings in. And there's a fly on my lens. Can you see that? Get off. <laughs> now when you first start an engine, bedding it in, you wanna do that to avoid what's called glazing the block. Now if that happens, basically, the, the cylinder's round and so is the rings on the piston, but it's not a perfect fit. Now oil can work their way past and then once the oil goes past the rings, it's really hard to get that back and you're gonna continuously have a blowy, smoky engine out your exhaust and that is no good for no one. You're burning oil. So by honing the block and putting those scratch marks in it, what happens is that cuts the ring to the perfect shape of the cylinder. Now that can't just happen with idling or running your engine with no load on it because it doesn't expand the ring enough. So when you first start an engine, you wanna get the revs up to bed that cam in and get the fluids up to the area. But once you've done that, you need to drive the thing the next time. Oh, now I get interrupted by a phone call. Hello? Anyway, where were we? So basically what we did when we drove up the hill, you wanna short shift the thing. So put it in a high gear and have the revs down low so that you can put your foot down. Now that forces a lot more fuel and air into the cylinder creating a larger explosion. And what that does is create more pressure in the cylinder, forcing that ring out. And then that um, honing in the block will actually start cutting the ring. If you have it in a higher gear with a little less load on it, you may not have the ring pressure inside there to actually cut those rings. So a higher gear, low RPM, put your foot down a bit and that swells those rings out and really cuts into the block. And once that's done, you've got a perfect fit in each cylinder and then you'll get no oil coming past those rings and you've bedded your engine in. So that's essentially what we've done today. Now the thing's run in, Zach can finish off everything else to do with the car and then get it over the pits ready for licensing and it should be happy days. Look, I'm gonna let him do the outro for this one. Let's see how he goes. Thanks for watching part two of the HQ build. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. 
get your merch from the website and I'll see you when we do a rig rundown and this thing is done. Did I miss anything? Please click the button to your left if you want to go and check out the latest merchandise we have on our website. If you missed last week's episode, click down below to see it. And most importantly, on the far left, hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching.